Hey guys, welcome to our sediment analysis lab. By the end of this lab, you will in fact love sand. Um, and I know that sounds weird, but it's gonna be true. So I wanna start this lab off with showing you a little video about why sand is so cool before we look at any samples. Sand is a time capsule. Every grain tells a story. Sand can be anything that's been worn down until it's reduced to some tiny essential fragment of what it once was. It's a technical term. Bigger than sand, that's gravel. Smaller, silt. Go to beaches across the world and you find sand that looks completely different. If you could take a single as an aside, if you go on vacation and you collect some cool sand, as a historical geology student, you are required to send me a sample at some point in your life. I have a great sand collection because of you historical folks. A full grain of sand from every beach, you would have a history of the world pinched between two fingers. A hundred years ago, a pebble chipped off a slab of granite in the Sierra Mountains. It was dragged by the current of the Sacramento River through the Delta, out the Golden Gate, and onto the beaches of San Francisco. Sometimes sand is a graveyard full of dead bodies. This is the shell of a tiny foram, a single-celled organism whose skeletons litter the bottom of the ocean. This sand, almost entirely coral. This one, shards of lava from a Hawaiian volcano. This tiny nugget of quartz tumbled down the waterways of Appalachia, all the way to the beaches of Florida. By the time it got there, it had worn down to the consistency of sugar. Time takes a big thing and makes it small. But sometimes the opposite can happen. Behold Uid, the only sand that accretes rather than erodes. Think snowball effect. A tiny speck of brine shrimp poop is tossed and turned on the ocean floor, accumulating minerals like calcium until it's a grain of sand the size of a pin tip. Sand is a snapshot in time, a stopping point between the very big and the very small, the landlocked and the oceanic. Are you ready to look at some sand? I know you are. Um, so let me walk you through your lab for today. So I incorporated that video into this video. So you're all set, you're primed and ready for sand. So let's walk you through some of the different things that you'll be looking at today. Um, the first part of lab kind of talks about when you look at sand under a microscope, what are some of the things that you might see? What are some of the things that you might look for? So you're going to look at different minerals, um, and these are some of the minerals that we've been talking about all semester. You're going to look at the sand. Is it rounded? Is it angular? Is it polished like samples like this that have bounced around the uh, bottom maybe of a river or waves, um, or are they frosted? Frosted sand particles have a, almost a pitted appearance and that's because frosted sand is typically deposited in windy environments. So this frosted texture that you see some sand particles have literally from particles of sand smashing into one another and abrading each other, each other and creating this sort of pitted or frosted appearance. Uh, let's see, where were we? What's the size of the sand grains? Is it coarse, medium, or fine? Um, and what are the fossils that you can see in there? So here are some of the fossils that you'll find. You'll find foraminifera, which you're familiar with from the first half of lab. You might find some sponge spicules, some animal parts, some little parts of lobsters. You might find some echinoderms, um, shells like echinoid shells from sea urchins. You might some find chunks of sea urchins. You might find very small little shells, tiny little bivalves like scallops. You'll find all of those things when you look under sand that has a lot of biological debris. Um, you might see sand that is stained red because there's some hematite mixed in. 
you might find sand that is well sorted. Um, and that's because there's a very continuous amount of energy available. You might find sand that's poorly sorted, which means there's variable amounts of energy. Um, whether it's water, wind, or ice that's transporting the sand, water will, as it slows down, deposit particles of increasingly smaller size, whereas wind has really well sorted sand um, because wind speeds generally are within a certain range. You might find lots with organic, some sand with organic contents like shells and coral that we talked about. There might be a very predominant mineral like quartz sand is very common, um, or you might have sand that is eroding a whole bunch, like a, a variety of sources and has a real mixture of minerals present. Um, we often call sand that has one mineral present as mature sand and sand that has a variety of minerals present immature sand. Um, the size of the particles, the sorting, the texture, those will tell you a little bit about the agents of erosion. Um, it might tell you about the type of weathering that you're looking at, whether it's physical or chemical weathering. Chemical weathering is actually both of them will result in rounding of particles. Um, let's see. So, and again, here's your agents of erosion. Frosted sand is often called Aeolian or windblown sand. And that comes from like, there's like a Greek god of wind whose name is like Aeolian or something like that. Um, and then uh, when sand is transported by water, it tends to have this sort of polished appearance. And not every beach is the same, right? You probably know that just from your life, but we certainly talked about that in 101. So whether the cliffs that are creating the sediment are right along the beach or whether they're a thousand miles away, that'll be reflected in the sand that you look at. So the first thing you're going to do is part one here. You're gonna look at a variety of sand samples and you're gonna answer some questions based on the criteria that we just talked about. What are the agents of erosion? What are the characteristics of the sand? And what does that tell you about its distance from the source area? Then you're going to open this document here called sand classification and use that to do parts two through four. So there are different types of sand as classified by sedimentologists. And here's just a handful of types. I will pull this file over so you can see in just a minute. Um, I <laughs> This is actually still animated from a presentation I gave with the sand, so <laughs> leading up to a, a previous lab. So you might have sand that is really full of coral, um, broken up pieces of coral, you'll see that in coral sand. Another type of sand are, is called ooid sand. Uh, ooid sand is really common in like evaporative basins where you have shallow water that's kind of sloshing back and forth and you have a lot of calcite that is dissolved in the water. Um, and so due to evaporation, these little balls of calcite form. And that is the, the building blocks really of oolitic limestone. Okay. Then we, as we go down here, here we have some Aeolian sand. So this Aeolian sand again is transported by wind and it has a frosted or pitted appearance. Volcanic sand typically is um, a variety of minerals and they're usually a bit darker in color, uh, generally an immature composition because these minerals are in general pretty Im immature and unstable at the surface of the earth. So they generally will weather away pretty quickly. So if you have a wide variety of minerals, that usually means that you're fairly close to your source area. Quartz sand, on the other hand, is sand that's been transported a really long distance and all of the unstable minerals have been weathered away and the very fine grain minerals like clay and silt have been washed out because the water is moving too quickly. Um, and then the last example we're gonna look at is the most common. This is what you find along beaches near lakes. That's called continental sand. So there's still a predominance of quartz, but there's also a lot of common rock forming minerals and biogenic material. Um, and uh, as the description says here, it's most common along beaches with, that is not influenced by volcanism. So you're gonna use the, that classification guide to answer some questions for parts two through four, and then look a little bit at um, the size of sand and how that can be used to infer the slope of a beach. So um, this is more fun than you think it's going to be, and you're really gonna enjoy your unit on sand. All right, that's it, have fun and good luck.